In this video, I'm going to cover inserts that you can make yourself with hand chase threads. The following Wednesday, after I put this video up, I'm going to put one up covering inserts that you can purchase online, perhaps from Carl Jacobson. He makes one and sells that on his website. So stay tuned for that and subscribe and you'll get a notice for that video and all my videos on Wyoming Woodturner on YouTube. Thank you. Okay, now today I'm going to talk about threaded inserts for your projects. I'm not trying to turn anybody into a thread chaser. This video is not intended to teach you how to chase threads, but it's going to give you a couple options when you're doing a project, okay? And I'm going to show you a couple different variations on this with end grain and cross grain that if you are a thread chaser, well, you can certainly make them. Okay, there are a lot of um, vendors out there who are selling them. You can go to the hardware store and get some brass or copper uh, plumbing fittings to make your own threaded inserts. Anyway, let me show you a couple examples and then we'll get into making our own threaded insert for our project. All right, now I want to show you a couple projects that you might use an insert. Okay, this is an old jewelry box that I made, and it's dated 1988. Yikes. So there is some proof that I used to be a woodworker. Box joints in the, in the ends, and I think this is a great option for a burial urn. Okay, it's a simple little box. You can make it as complicated or simple as you like. And you can also uh, leave the lid, or this part, glued together, or one piece, and simply put an insert in the bottom of this, where you would fill the ashes or the cremains in, in an opening on the bottom, and you can uh, secure it with a threaded insert. Okay, uh, that's one option, and I think that's a great way to go. Here's another one of my burial urns <laughs> still in the works and what I do typically is I'll start with uh, like box elder this will not take a thread all right so what I have in the in the opening is uh, looks like some black wood which is an insert okay it's only half of the insert the other part is the 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 threaded lid, which is black wood, and it takes a thread, so I don't really need to put a corresponding uh, insert on that. I'll call it an insert, but that threads together. There's another option. Now, let's look at, you know, ideally, this is a, a nice piece of boxwood, and actually I wrote a magazine article on this particular little box and it's a thread chasing article on the American Wood Turner magazine anyway and the, the top and the bottom the lid and the base will both take a thread so I don't need to do an insert on something like that now let me show you one more little item which I think is really cool this is box elder and I got a lot of box elder, as you may know, and it will not take a thread. But on the the underside of my my mushroom lid, I've got an insert. And it's it's boxwood, and I think I probably tap that with a machinist tap. Okay, here is a piece of not sure I'm going to call it uh, king wood, but it's also got. A corresponding threaded bit, you know, um, that goes into the base of my mushroom or the lid of my mushroom right there. And this allows you to expand your options greatly. If I have two woods that won't take a thread, I can simply make an insert. And that is the topic for today. Make a mushroom. Someplace in this video, 
I'm going to put up some links and mention places where you can get or buy an insert, the male and the female parts of an insert. Okay, what I'm going to do just to you know show you how to do it, how I would do it, um, I'm going to do one in end grain. Okay, both these pieces are king wood. One's a little bigger in, in measurement there. But I can do a threaded male and female insert combination in end grain. Okay, and I think of what I'm going to do is pick this piece here. That'll be one option. This is a piece of pink ivory. This piece of wood cost me $12. Okay, so I use it sparingly. Now, again, I could use the end of this as an end grain insert. Another really good option is to use an insert made of cross grain or side grain wood. And in some respects, it threads easier than end grain. Okay, now one issue you'll have there is uh, wood movement or shrinkage. So you have to make sure this wood is plenty dry to do that. So anyway, let's uh, get these ready. We'll find a lathe and we'll make some inserts. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my end grain inserts. So there'll be a male and a female insert from this piece of wood. Now I mislabeled this. I'm pretty sure this is Macassar ebony and not Kingwood. So we'll put this between centers. I have a step center in my headstock and a revolving live center in my tail stock. I'll take a spindle roughing gouge and quickly round this over. Make sure everything's locked down. Okay, now like anything we do, wood turning a project is simply making a lot of decisions. Okay, and one of the decisions, I have a nice little piece of wood here. This is some beautiful Macassar ebony. This would make a nice little box. Okay, it's not very big, but you have to decide whether you should turn this into threaded inserts or just simply make a box out of it. So I'm going to put my my chuck jaws in the headstock here. Don't think I'll be needing the tail center right now anyway. Okay. Now, this is a very small jaw set. This is about uh, an inch and a quarter opening right there. So, so anyway, we'll take our little block of wood here and uh, I'm going to try to use this jaw set and also a set of pin jaws for this project. Okay, you have to kind of think about that. Okay, now one big difference between what I ordinarily do with an insert is when I'm making a hollow form, okay, I showed this earlier in the video, I make, make a hollow form like this. I make the insert to fit the hollow form. And what I'm doing right now is I'm making uh, the male and the female uh, insert counterparts before I have any idea what I'm going to put them into. And that to me is a challenge. You have to have a little bit of an idea uh, the project you're going to use these for. So a little bit different and uh, I always put a piece of wood in the in the hollow form here and then do my thread chasing when it's in the vessel. So, so this is an option. And my point is you can buy these inserts off the internet, um, make your own out of plumbing fittings or PVC pipe. That's up to you. So.
Okay, now I've taken an 8 inch parting tool and defined the thickness of my, my insert. Now I'm going to start with the female insert. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to drill to the depth of my female insert. Okay, which is just about the thickness of this Forstner bit. This is an inch and three eighths, and I'm going to go down a little past this groove right here that I established. Turn my lathe on, turn the speed down. I don't need to be turning a thousand. Um, I'm right at 450. Plenty fast enough. All right, so let's uh, advance our, our drill. All right. Okay, and I'm good there. I, I've got plenty of depth. Okay, so let me bring my a tool rest back up here. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this the way I make an insert for a vessel. Let me show you the next step that I do before I do any thread chasing. Okay, let me let me show you this. I'm gonna go back to my eighth inch parting tool and I'm gonna make a little ledge right here. Okay. A little bit more speed. Now I'm going to go back to my eighth inch parting tool and just simply part this off. Here we go. Now this is my my female insert. Okay, and I'm going to chase the threads next and I'll show you how I do that. Now let me show you why I have this step in here. Okay. So what I have here is my insert ready to thread. Okay, that's my female insert. And what I've done here, this is um, perhaps the top of your hollow form or where you're going to put this insert. And what I've done, I hope you can see it, I've got a little ledge in there. And I've also got a corresponding ledge or shoulder on the insert. And that just fits down in there. And when you glue that in, it will be true because you have places that register uh, on mating surfaces. Okay, so just so you could see this a little bit better, what I've done is I've just cut that little piece of wood and maybe you can see this. There we go. You can see how that connects. All right, and I do that with my inserts every time and it just naturally trues up your threads to the level of your project. All right, now as I get ready to chase my, my thread in this, let me show you a fine point. Here is my insert. Okay, now this is the top of the insert. Okay, and that'll be the surface of your vessel or your project. So I want to chase my threads from this direction inward. Okay put this into my scroll chuck. Now these jaws came with this particular Vicmark chuck. It's a Vicmark 100. The nice thing about doing an insert like this and you're chasing threads is there's no shoulder back there to contend with. Okay, so I can go all the way through with my thread chaser First thing I want to do is create a chamfer on the opening of my, my recess. 
I'll do that with my my point tool. So I'm at turning speed. Clean that shoulder up, go back to thread chasing speed. And I'm at, uh, I'm about 280 or 290. I'll go with that right here. So hold my thread chaser as level as I can. And uh, it shouldn't take long. Now you can see I've got some really, really nice little shavings there. All right, now you can watch one of my thread chasing videos. I've got a thread established all the way back. I need to go a little bit deeper. And at this point, my chaser is simply following the thread and I'm pulling back on my thread chaser to enable that thread chaser to cut. And those threads look very good. I'm going to quit there. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, do some thread chasing on the male tenon here that's going to mate up with my, my female recess. I see I need to do a little bit more. I've got a little bit of a taper on this right here. I'm going to take my point tool Right there, establish a recess, and that recess will allow me to remove my thread chaser before it hits that, that shoulder. So I'll start with a little, little chamfer on the front edge right there where my Threads will start. Go down to chasing speed. Oh, 330 or so. I have a good groove started there, so all I'm going to do is just push my thread chaser into that groove. going to follow along and let's just check and see how close we are here okay my male tenon was much too large so I had to take some of that off a little bit more speed here Okay, it's just starting to grab. Okay, we're back to 320 chasing speed. Now I've got some really, really dry wood here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some mineral oil and lubricate my threads. Stop and check once again.
Okay, I've gone a couple layers there. I need to do just a little bit more chasing. All right, clean up my threads. Yeah, okay. I think that is about as good as I'm going to get it. I'm going to mark something here, which will be apparent in just a second. Let me, let me do something. All right, with my, my inserts together, I've got plenty of threads on the male uh, tenon right there. So I just uh, had my female thread, I had my female recess threaded on there and just marked that with my parting tool. So the next thing I need to do is just simply part that off. Now, depending on the project you have, you may have a finial coming out of this, or you may have a, the lid to your hollow form, is what, you, what I often do. Let's just part this off. Hey. All right. Rather unceremoniously. So there we there we have it. A set of inserts, male and female. And when I do the female recess and I use a Forstner bit, I automatically get nice parallel sides to chase my threads. And it's important on your male counterpart to do the same thing as best you can. So we'll just thread that in there. <laughs> and there you have it. So you can just simply put that into your project right there. And we're all set. We'll go back to my little, my little display block of wood here so it would look something like that. Okay, so I I took a little section of dowel and just hot melt glued that onto my male insert and that'll allow you to just operate this till you get your project completed because you get that in there well, you can't get it out very easily so uh, you can apply a little bit of heat on that and it'll it'll pop right off. So there we go. There's our um, end grain insert, male and female, completed. Now, let me show you what I would do with the cross grain. And I've got actually a couple really nice pieces of pink ivory. For some reason I had a little a little board of it about six inches long and that thick. So um, grain's running this direction, so it's going to be a cross grain insert. Now, why would you do cross grain? <laughs> why would you do cross grain instead of an end grain? Well, basically, there we go. You can probably chase threads in cross grain in more wood, more species of wood than you can in grain. Now, this is this is a cross grain and it's going this direction, perpendicular to my bedways, so I've got to cut across the wood, okay, as I round this over. Now later on, I'll get to a point where chasing the threads in both these pieces will be pretty much similar to the uh, end grain insert. So I'm going to go to uh, 
spindle gouge. Make sure everything's locked down. Okay, I just took my point tool and fine-tuned my tenon and let me show you in case I didn't mention this I just have this jammed against these chuck jaws right here okay and all I needed to do was to form my my tenon that I will chuck up right now and again we would start with the female tenon I probably could have made that a little bit smaller but uh, that'll give us a, a bigger uh, female insert. So we'll check that up and I will continue to round this over. Clean up the face of this. Okay, now what I did off camera, I just reestablished a tenon on this end. And it, this takes a little bit of planning because you want to be able to turn and chase threads and do this um, as efficiently as you can. And it, really all comes down to uh, being able to check this up. So I'm going to go in here. Nope. Okay, now from here on, this is going to be pretty much the same procedure as before, but you have to be careful about the grain. I can't come in from this direction in a cutting orientation or I'll get in trouble. So I can hold my my uh, 3 8 beading and parting tool horizontal as a scraper. I just want to clean that surface up right there. As a scraper. Okay, uh, so I've taken a narrow parting tool right here. That's where I'll part that off. And from here to the top of this piece of wood, that'll be my female recess. So from here on, I'm not sure how much I'll show you of this because it's really pretty much all the same. So I'll put a uh, Jacob Chuck in my, my tail center, drill a hole, and chase my threads. Okay, fast forward. I'm turning right at 325 and I'm just at the very end of chasing my female thread. And I'm gonna call that good. There's no better wood than pink ivory chasing threads. So I'm taking my parting tool and just part this off. Okay, so I have one female insert, little shoulder there like I did before, and that's all ready for a project, except I need my, my male tenon insert to match up with that, and that's the next operation. All right, now my cross grain insert set is done. There's the male. 
There's the female. And that pink ivory is just lovely wood. I'm going to put that on there. I've got it marked how far I want to part that off. So I'll just part it off with my narrow parting tool. Turn the speed up a little bit. There you have it. Here's my little uh, threaded male insert. And that's going to go right in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, here is my pink ivory insert set. Got a little dowel on that as well. And I hope you can see the threads. They're really, really nice. And all ready for a project. This can be the top of a hollow form, an urn, who knows what. Maybe it's a, a box, a lid and a base for a box. And it's all about being able to chase threads in the wood for your insert where you can't for the project you're doing. I do a lot of box elder where you can't chase a thread. There's my Macassar Ebony. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. That was really kind of fun for me. Get back to do a little bit of thread chasing. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me a lot. And I will talk to you next time.